Welcome to Easy Email Marketing. I'm your host, Yael Keown, mum, FIFO wife, MBA, coffee lover, survivor superfan, and creator of the email experience. In Easy Email Marketing, you'll benefit from my nearly 20 years experience where I'll be teaching you all the tips, tricks, and insider info on how to create feel-good, non-spammy experiences for your subscribers. Let's get stuck in. Who doesn't want more time? (laughs) Everyone, right? Welcome back to the Easy Email Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Yael Keown, and today we have the privilege of having an amazing guest join us today and explore creating time in your business and your life. Um, And of course, this applies to email marketing because one of the biggest reasons I hear um, people say when it comes to email is I just don't have time. And that's the time to, you know, put into setting things up in the first place. Sometimes that can feel a little bit overwhelming, but also the time, you know, uh, each and every week to write that email. So I'm especially excited to bring this guest on today to talk all things time creation. They call her the time creator, in fact. It's Tash Guthrie, and she is a time management and productivity educator and the founder of the Time Creator Planner, podcast community, and membership. She believes that everyone has the power within them to live the life they truly desire, free of overwhelm, burden, and stress. Tash helps busy women manage the multifaceted, geez, I can't speak, (laughs) demands of their life, take control of their time, and improve their productivity and time management skills to ultimately create more time for the people and the things they love most. Tasha's mantra is plan hard, live easy, and this is reflected in her strategies for creating a purpose-driven, fulfilled life free from complication, stress, and overwhelm. Now, Tash normally lives on a farm on the far north coast of New South Wales with her husband, two children, several chickens, and one gorgeous cow, and she is also a full-time primary school teacher. But currently, she is traveling Australia with her family in her caravan. And when Tash and her family literally pulled in to park the caravan in my driveway as they made it all the way over here to Perth, we took the opportunity to have a chat in my office. So in this episode, we talk about why people struggle to get those things done that they say are important, how we can create more time in our days, how to get started on big projects how to make those regular tasks like sending emails a regular habit. And we also explore the difference of going from limited time, so her working full time, kids, farm and a business, to seemingly unlimited time while traveling and how that actually has an impact on productivity. But before we get stuck into all that goodness and the episode, I did want to let you know about an exciting brand new live training I have coming up on the 18th of May. So if you're listening to this when it's released, you've got about a week and a half. Um, and this is for you if you're feeling stuck in your service-based or course creation, digital product creation business, and you want to get your motivation and momentum back. It's called Get Unstuck, seven simple strategic shifts for busy, bored or burnt out service providers to finally step into their potential. We'll be exploring seven different things you can do that can stop you feeling that stagnant, um, awful stagnant feeling and make everything feel easier. So from shifts across your offers to your time to marketing to sales, you'll uncover at least one thing that could just make that big difference for you. So it's happening live on Wednesday, May 18th with a limited time replay for those who can't make it live. So make sure to register at yalekeown.com forward slash stuck. Okay, with that all said, let's get back into talking time and today's episode with the brilliant Tash Guthrie. Hi, Tash. Welcome to my podcast studio. (laughs) I've always wanted to say that. Nice. Thanks for having me in person. In person. Yes. So when you pulled in to my driveway, I was like, okay, I have to get you in here and talking all things um, time creation because one of the biggest challenges I see when it comes to email marketing is time. In almost any networking scenario, when I'm meeting people for the first time, the first thing they say to me is, oh, yeah, I need to do my email marketing. Mm -hmm. I should get around to that, you know, but I just haven't gotten around to doing it. And, of course, you know, time just comes up over and over again, Um, the time to actually get set up and then the time to actually, oh, I'm going to send an email every single week and being consistent. So, yes, when you literally pulled into my driveway, (laughs) I knew I had to get you on because that is your jam. But before we get 
into the ins and outs of creating time to set up and write your emails, tell me, how did you become so obsessed with creating time? Oh, the journey goes back, Yale. Let me take you back. And if you are a mum and you're listening, you might perhaps uh, understand some of what I'm about to explain. But if we go back to 2012, um, my journey started on the laundry floor amongst all of the dirty clothes, bawling my eyes out. Because at the time I had a four week old ish, say newborn, who was screaming her head off and had been for hours and hours and hours. And I had dirty laundry all around me. I had wet clothes that were clean in the machine that I had not been able to hang out for over six hours because of the screaming child. And I was actually running a business at the same time. And I could hear in the office the dings and the pings and the notifications and things. And it just, I felt like everything was coming down on top of me. And around me, I was thinking, look at all these other mums. Like, how are they getting all this stuff done? Like everyone else's life looked amazing. And here I am absolutely failing and not being able to keep up. And I thought, what is wrong with me? Why can everyone else find time to do? And that was before Instagram. This is before Instagram. (laughs) So I certainly had Facebook, but we certainly didn't have Instagram. But no one was talking about this. And I'm like, well, what's wrong with me? And, you know, why can't I keep up with everything and why is my child still screaming? And I think that that was the icing on the cake. And it was a very um, important moment in my life where I realized that this is now my life. Like this is first baby. This is now my life. And I ha- whatever I knew before was not going to work now. And that was a really defining moment because I knew, all right, something had to change. And that's how I became really obsessed with working out how, when, who, all of the things so that I could get done the things that I needed to get done. Yeah, I think so many people can relate to that. Um, I definitely can. Um, that laundry, never still, yeah. Never laundry will always be there for you and <laughs> yeah. no one else will. <laughs> oh, and emails and email marketing and having that in your head. Yes. Um, so, so why do you think so many people struggle to do the things that they say they should mm-hmm. and even actually have identified personally. Yep, that actually is something important that I want to do, but they just never get started. And next thing you know, it's three months, six months, a year, and they're still in the same place they were. Yeah, it's it's very common and it happens to all of us at different times. I think it comes back to two things. Firstly, it's around having – the very clear vision of what it is that you want to be able to go ahead and do. So we have lots of ideas and as creatives, we have a lot of ideas uh, for our businesses or for our lives that we want to, you know, I'd love to do this or I'd love to do that. But until it becomes a very clear vision and part of your goals, I think it is um, difficult to almost like catch it from the air and and bring it to life. So um, having that clear vision is really, really important and, and knowing why it's important is also another reason to add into there as well. And I think without that, you can't then go ahead and make the plans and schedule the time to Mm. do those things. But yet still sometimes we know the things, like we know the facts, we know the statistics. Um, If anyone needs me to talk about the statistics of email (laughs) marketing, I can definitely riff off that. But people know it Mm -hmm. logically, um, but still, yeah, it's, it's, it's just... Is it just because they can't see it for their unique circumstances? What is it? I think sometimes when you're really in your business as well, you if you were asked to say stand up and speak about your business, you could probably have hours worth of things to say. So in terms of email marketing specifically or, you know, whether it's uh, course content or whether it's, in, you know, social media content, unless you're really clear on what it is you're going to say and how you want to unpack that and get really clear on what that process is or what that story mm. is and how it's going to be unpacked and in what order and for what purpose, it's um, it becomes so overwhelming that I think we just go, we, we just put it to the back, you know, yeah. push it to the back uh, and then we don't get started or we start and then we fall off the wagon because we don't know where to next. Yeah, so we need that confidence in our voice mm. <laughs> that you do have something that people are interested in reading about and checking out and it does serve a higher purpose in your business. Yes. Love that. Okay, so we're getting over that first hurdle. We've got a clear vision. How do we actually create the time to bring it to life? <laughs> <laughs> and this is the thing. I've I've been doing this for many years and – when you're looking to be able to create time for a specific thing, and we'll, we'll talk about obviously email marketing, 
It's about understanding how you're currently using the time in your business. So if you have set work hours or maybe you don't, it is about understanding how you're currently using that time so that you can then understand where you can fit it in and where you can put it and how it's going to work. So if, for example, you are spending a lot of time on one area of your business um, and you know you've, you've figured that out, you've done a bit of a time audit and you go, wow, you know, I spend this many hours a week doing this particular task, you know, do you need that many hours on that task? Uh, can you delegate that off to somebody else? Or are you spending a lot of time doing the things in your business that are not your zone of genius that you shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, So understanding and doing that time audit, knowing what you're actually spending your time on is I think the first step to being able to create the time going forward. Yeah. Zone of genius and as well, just is it actually, are you doing the things that will get you to your goals or the things that you just sort of are doing because you do them. Yes. And are they (laughs) income producing activities? And I'm, I know I fall into this trap as well, you know, I'm working on social media, but really you're just sitting there scrolling. Like yeah. <laughs> we all do it. Um, so, yeah, understanding how you use your time is a really powerful tool to be able to know how to use it going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, so how do we get started with those really big projects? Because as I mentioned, I think email marketing kind of falls into these two categories, um, which is one is getting set up. I have to choose my software. I have to you know, create the sign up forms and integrate it with my website, which can seem completely overwhelming, but it's actually mm. relatively simple. How do we get started on those seemingly big things? Yeah. So you've, again, comes back to that clarity, having a really clear vision on what it is, turning it into a goal, something that's, you know, one of those smart goals, making sure that you know exactly what you want to achieve uh, by doing your email marketing and what its purpose is. And then I think you need to branch out into what what support and resources do I need to be able to make this doable for me? So as you just said, you talk about getting the software set up. Uh, most people will hear that and go, oh, tech. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> and, and if it means you need help with it, you get the help. Yep. And if you don't get the help because you don't have the skills, then you can't get started. So sometimes it is about um, looking at who who can support you and how. And and then it really is about reducing your overwhelm around that particular task. So what's going to make it easy? What are the first five steps you're going to need to do and then systematically work through those things? Yeah. And yeah, get advice. Get advice. Even if it's just listening to these podcast episodes, you can definitely break it down to um, much simpler things. Yeah. Okay. And then what about then the repetitive tasks? So things that we're meant to be consistent and I'm using quotation marks around that because even I'm not entirely consistent um, with email marketing sometimes but how do we just get make those things a habit and just like a practice that we we do Mm. throughout our weeks so I've got this little thing routines and systems will set you free that's Mm -hmm. my thing and I think what gets scheduled gets done and so if part of your work week is uh, if it's weekly or fortnightly or monthly, whenever you're sending emails, is it needs to be scheduled in. And what you're doing then on that daily level or that weekly level will filter back to what that greater clarity and vision that you have is. Uh, but if it's not scheduled in as one of your tasks uh, repetitively as part of your routine, I think that's where we fall off the wagon. It's almost like you've got to wake up and know that, all right, Monday's email day. Yeah. Or Tuesday, social media day or whatever it is that you're going to do. Uh, If you have some kind of routine around it and it's scheduled in, that's setting you up for success. Yeah. I I think having that layer of accountability for when things Mm. are going to happen, that your audience is used to seeing things on certain days or you have someone else, you know, that is you've you've sort of set up this little expectation without putting unrealistic pressures on yourself in (laughs) um, random scenarios. Um, But I also... (laughs) I don't know. Um, I fall into this trap sometimes where literally there's like a task that I put on my to-do list like every week and mm-hmm. I actually schedule the time to do it or say, okay, I'm going to do that on Wednesday. And then a Wednesday comes and I'm just like, oh, I can't be bothered. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I don't do it. And then another week goes yeah. and it's just. I think oh, this is an interesting one because I know when you're doing a task like an email marketing, even though it doesn't sound like a creative task, it is a creative task because it makes um, you have to actually create that text and and, do, and you know make that email happen. But you can't wait for motivation to strike. You've mm. got to be consistent with your actions. And if you are consistently creating that routine and consistently showing up and doing it, 
uh, that d- despite whether or not you're in the mood, it gets it done. And sometimes done, you know, good is okay. Like if it's done, it doesn't have to be excellent, doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, but if you are consistently giving out quality content and you stick to your schedule, uh, that's I think when you start to build that consistency, it will just become another thing that you just do, like mm. the way that you wash up after dinner or the way that you whatever it is. You know, we we get into these patterns and routines, and that is what will hold you through. Yeah, yeah. You you eventually get used to it. <laughs> eventually yeah. get used to it. And I've got yeah probably. Yeah, a whole um, podcast episode in me all about <laughs> consistency. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So I'd love it from a different angle. I'd love to hear your perspective because we talked a lot about scheduling and, and routines and clarity around goals and stuff. You're going through a very interesting experience right now because, yes, back home in um, normal times, you're a teacher yes. full time. Yes. You have your business, you have the Time Creator Planner, you've got a membership and all sorts of other entrepreneurial ideas. Um, but now you're on the road with your family <laughs> traveling around Australia in a caravan and you have an abundance of time. I do have an abundance how, of time. <laughs> what, how have you found, what, what have you found easier in terms of your <sighs> getting stuff done and why? All right. Well, we'll go back to my previous routine just to give a little bit of, um, I suppose, you know, background. So full time teaching. So my day basically Monday to Friday looked like gym at 530 at school by eight, probably leave there by five. Yes, teachers work longer than nine till three. Um, <laughs> and, you know, then you're home and you're doing your dinner stuff, your family stuff, bath time, bedtime. And so it was really predictable for me that I would probably have between eight and nine o'clock at night to pack my orders, do anything membership related, write any emails, um, do all of those things. And that worked for me because I knew that that was my pocket of time. And if I didn't use it, that was gone for the day. Getting on the road, I was like, yes, this is going to be amazing because I'm going to have all this time. (laughs) And to be honest, it's not working out so well. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. We're four months into this trip and there is, we're living in a 21-foot caravan and there are people around me all the time. So getting any time without my family to do some good solid work is really challenging. And then if I do take the time and say, look, I need an hour, they go off and do the most amazing things and I miss out. And we're on this trip for this reason. So I'm actually finding that not having the routines, not having that um, really predictable uh, timeline of what happens in my day has actually made it harder for me to create some kind of working schedule, despite the fact that I could work all day long if I wanted to. So I don't know. I'm still working out what new, Mm. what this new routine means for me. That old saying, if you want something done, give it to a busy person. Yeah. I'm now that non-busy person. <laughs> so I'm the opposite. Oh, it's so interesting. So there you you have it, guys. Like if you are like, I'm super busy, then you actually – You have a, an advantage. <laughs> yeah, you might have an advantage. So don't wait for that magical week when you're just going to be able to just smash everything out. Yeah. Schedule it in. Yeah. Book it in. Get it done. Get clear on, on why you're doing it and make that commitment. Okay. So – if there was just one thing you would like um, my audience to take away from this episode or about just like time creating productivity in general, mm-hmm. what would it be? I would probably, I mean, there were a few, but I think the one thing would be that routines and systems will set you free. So if you can create routines around your work habits and systems around your work habits and your life habits so that they're harmoniously blending, uh, that's going to set you free in terms of feeling accomplished, feeling like you've been really productive. Uh, so try and get yourself on a bit of autopilot with how you work through your week, how what your work you know time looks like. Uh, understand how you're using it, and yeah, your routines and systems will then allow you to fly. Right. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for all your insight and wisdom, and hopefully people are just thinking thinking through. And um, I guess my hope out of this episode is that. Yes, obviously you will think, you know, apply some of this stuff to to finally doing that email marketing Mm. thing. But hopefully just out of this episode, you are now feeling like you can sit and reflect and just take a moment and look at your time, look at how you're spending your days and weeks, um, looking at your priorities and just kind of sit with it for a little bit and just 
see what one change that you could make that could make everything else just that little bit more productive or in flow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, awesome, Tash. Thank you so much. How can everybody find you? Um, probably wouldn't be able to physically <laughs> find you, you right can't now because you don't know where me. we are. Um, but online. <laughs> you might. Uh, online, you can find me. I love hanging out on Insta. You can send me a DM uh, at Tashka3 underscore time creator or just on my website at tashka3.com.au. Awesome. I'll pop all those links in to the show notes. Um, But thank you so much. And yeah, hopefully you enjoy the rest of your trip. Thanks, Yael. Thanks so much to Tash for sharing all of those amazing tips and insights and just ways to think about time with us. I did find it especially interesting how she was actually finding it more of a challenge to get things done now that she has an abundance of time versus when things were limited. So that is food for thought for those of us who have a full-on schedule. If you did want to connect with Tash, you can find her website at tashgathry.com.au or on Instagram at tashgathry underscore time creator. I'll include the links for all of that in the show notes. And you can also try her planner for free um, with some downloadable pages at tashgathry.com.au forward slash planner. I would love to hear from you about what you've enjoyed from this episode, maybe a key thing um, you were taking away. So please pop me a DM over on Instagram at Yale Keown as well. And if you liked this guest interview format, please let me know. Um, I'm open to suggestions for future guests as well. So I would love to connect with you. Also, make sure to sign up for that upcoming free and live Get Unstuck Masterclass at yalekeown.com forward slash stuck. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to Easy Email Marketing. It's an absolute honor that you chose to listen. If you love this episode, then it would mean the world to me if you could leave a review so that others can find this podcast and make their email marketing easy too. Finally, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a thing. Until next time, have an awesome day and make sure to keep showing up and serving in those inboxes.